I really need to work on a time schedule like bad. But anyway, guys, I uh, figured I'd go live here for a minute, share my thoughts. Uh, one of the things that came up <clears throat> today, among some other things, but the big thing, as you can see by the title, the Hollow Wicked trailer dropped. And I was about a half hour behind in seeing it, but uh, it definitely had that old school horror feel to it. Uh, pretty impressed by that. Oh, hold on, this is a different video. So basically, uh, they talked about the chambers and they talked about what's going to happen. The only thing they really didn't talk about was like the movies that they were going to play, which would I think. I think would have made a bit of a difference. Probably that B-level horror shit thing. Uh, four people tuning in. Damn. That's cool as fuck. So, uh, anyways, it's looking all right. Like, I'm not going to shit on Hollow Wicked. I mean, my history with it anyway. Uh, but they're definitely doing it big this year. It's something completely different. The last time I saw it was the Fillmore. And that was 2008. That was my first and last Hollow Wicked. And yeah, it's it's looking like a damn good time. 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. on October 31st. So tickets right now from what the trailer said anyway, it's $35. So that's pretty fucking impressive. Uh, when you when you think about everything that goes into it, Zug Island's going to be there. Misery of the Spanish side. Motown Rage is going to be there. Ishan, Project Born, Anybody Kill It. Of course, Insane Clown Posse. Uh, they've got the DJs coming up. Mikey Clark. They've got DJ Clay. DJ Carlito, I don't know who that is, and I don't know Kuma either. But, I mean, shit. MC Ghost, and then they've got uh, Kevin Gill's going to be there, Rude Boy, Jump Steady. And then they've got the JCW thing coming up in the Chamber 2. Uh, it's going to be the Bath of Blood event. at Juggalo Gladiatorial Combat later on in the night. So you get to like pick all that shit that you want to go and see. Uh, Moonbeams After Party. I'm assuming that's titties. I'm saying no to titties. Hashtag me too. And uh, we've got into the Echo Side card game bullshit. If you're into that, uh, basically, I'm guessing it's like a D&D thing. I don't fucking know. Card game, basically, with all your favorites. Uh, Jump City cards. And you've got uh, Mr. Happy and all them guys. Yeah, it's my boy, David. Hit me up. Fuck out of here, David. Unless you tune into this shit. Uh, there's a stupid basketball thing. Uh, that just tells me it's filler. Uh, you've got Chamber Number 4, where they're going to be playing all the horror classics. So, the trailer's dope. Like, I'm not going to shit on it. And like I said, I'm pretty unbiased when it comes to, you know, this whole thing. Um, I'm not a fan of ICP's new music. However, their events seem to be pretty fucking dope. So, cool as fuck. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be amazing. Especially where the venue is. It's something I've never seen before. It looks like an old factory. Really cool. Um... Yeah, fucking, again, Hollow Wicked, Halloween, uh, October 31st, 35 bucks a pop. It's cool shit. The trailer's dope. Um, can't drop a link in the description because there really isn't one. But, uh, again, $35, uh, 1600 Clay Street. So, in Detroit, Michigan. It's, looks looks all right. I mean, if you've got the time. Check it out. I definitely strongly recommend Fright Fest, though. I mean, you get to see Last American Rockstars, Whitney Payton, ROC, uh, Twisted doing Most Tasteless in its entirety. You know, it's going to be a good fucking Halloween this year, guys. Like I said, 2017 turned out fucking rocky, but the month of October, like, this is one we are not going to forget. So, I'm pretty excited about all of that. That's that's going to be dope. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm curious to see what you guys think about the whole Hollow Wicked trailer. I don't know if you guys saw it or not. And yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good time, I think. I think if you're into that kind of shit. Uh, me, if I wasn't fucking tied up, I would probably go. I'm not going to lie. It looks like a damn good time. Like, I'm, I'm envious if you do go. Uh, me, though, I've got plans for Fright Fest, which I feel like I'm still more excited for. I'm more thrilled about the lineup. I mean, Jesus Christ, the lineup. And the after party for only 15 bucks, like, that's going to be dope. Uh, it's all taken care of. Um, so, no lift, no anything. We're good. Uh, we got the tickets. We've got, I'll fucking show you the tickets.
ticket. Come with me. Let me show you the fucking tickets. I got the tickets. Let me show you this shit real quick. Sorry, it's a little dark in here. Alright, here we go. Uh, so, back to do this. Fright Fest after party tickets. Dope as fuck. Check that out. Boom, yeah. Really excited about that. Then we've got my fucking actual concert tickets. Again, this turn, like I said, turns to be a really good fucking month. We got Fright Fest. Boom, yeah. Really excited about that shit. So, yeah, we've got a good fucking time coming our way. It's going to be a good fucking month for sure. Closes out strong. Um, we end it with Hollow Wicked again, guys. Like, that's the shit. Um, I can't, I can't plug in enough, guys. Fright Fest, October 30th. Uh, doors open, I believe, at 6, so, and then it goes, there's the after party that starts at 11, right afterwards, it's going to be at the Majestic Theater, and then the after party's at the Majestic Cafe, if you haven't checked it out, check out the pictures, it's it's pretty alright, uh, I'm happy about it, um, really exciting, uh, Lars is going to be performing, uh, found out that Lit, the song Lit for the music video shoot that I was in, uh, was actually not off their mixtape. It's actually off their full length album. So we know very little about the mixtape. We know a little bit more about the album release. Uh, Lars goes on tour after their album release, which I can't wait for. That's going to be dope. That's going to be a cool ass fucking tour. And King Gordy is still doing his whole thing with Sick Bucks. So he's got two projects going on. Damn, that dude keeps busy. But, I mean, Looking towards like the immediate future, we got what T minus 14, 13 days. It's going to be absolutely insane. I can't wait. Uh, Fright Fest. What's up, Sam? Uh, we got Fright Fest. We've got Hollow Wicked. If we could do a fucking double header, like this is one of those times, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is one of those times where I'm like, damn, if the two could just collide, like make it like a two day event, whatever. Like, that would be sick, but they're both doing their separate thing. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, it's fucking Magic Ninja Entertainment doing Magic Ninja Entertainment. And I like the idea of them doing Devil's Night. Uh, Captain! Captain! Good to see you, buddy. Uh, you got to think, Fright Fest. Here's the thing with Fright Fest that a lot of people don't know. Fright Fest tickets went on sale before Twisted announced their most tasteless tour. So that tells you there was hype already. Before we knew about Most Tasteless in its entirety. Before we knew anything really about Fright Fest. All we knew was that Twisted was going to be doing a Fright Fest event. And they rumored who was going to be there. And Lars wasn't announced to be at Fright Fest until I believe it was August, September. And I bought my tickets back in June. So Jones eventually went to the cider mill today, fed some goats at the petting farm, and got donuts and cider. Yes. Yes, we did. What that has to do with Fright Fest? I don't know. Back to the cool news. Uh, we got Fright Fest, guys. Uh, it's, again, Whitney Payton, Last American Rock Stars, ROC, uh, Twisted. We got Blazy Dead Homie, Triple Threat, playing at the after party. And they're not doing the after party at all at all the shows. And you got to think, it was like 20 bucks a head. Yeah, I had fun, but we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about Fright Fest. And we've got all these really cool... That sounds frightening, Ashley. Uh, yeah. But look at it like this. You figure you're paying that out for Astronomicon, for the gathering, whatever. When you combine both those. So if you hit up... You can't you, you check in your hotel room on August 28th, do your thing, do whatever you want to do in Detroit. Then you've got Fright Fest on the 30th, and then you've got on the 31st Hollow Wicked. If you can afford to do it, fucking do it. If you can also time it right, go do it. We already made plans for the 31st. But guys, Hollow Wicked looks dope. I'm excited for it. Um, I uh, Chuck wants to be out here. For Fright Fest. I hope Chuck shows up. 
uh, for Fright Fest. And God damn it, I hope he goes to Hollow Wicked and does a fucking live review on it. I think that would be the shit. Uh, I know he's going to Malenko, going to try and make it to. I wish I could do both. What up, James? Good to see you, brother. Dude, Caption, get your ass out here for Fright Fest. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be the shit. Uh, Last American Rockstars, I was just part of the fucking video shoot, and it felt like a live concert. Now, to see them in their entirety is amazing. I got a glimpse into it, and I got to tell you, even though that Last American Rockstars video dropped, which was dope, a good self-titled song, fucking amazing. What? Oh. It wasn't Fright Man. The dog. She wants you to see the dog. Uh, the next time Chuck or CP interviews you, don't let them step on you. They have a tendency to overpower the conversation. I get cut off a lot, I think. I, I feel like I get cut off a lot. And I feel like I get interrupted a lot, too. I don't know if you guys know that. But, again, guys, I'm telling you right now. Fucking do it up. Captain, Sam Sleazy, like, fucking head up Fright Fest. Tickets are still on sale. When I talked to Gordy at the video shoot, we thought that the tickets were fucking out. But they're not. Like, tickets are still available for both the event and the after party. And again, these tickets weren't on sale back in June. That's another thing that I thought was kind of dicey about it. And how I figured they put their eggs in one basket. And I don't want to cut into Chuck's time here because I'm looking forward to seeing him at uh, 11.30. Going to talk about the whole Playboy the Beast thing. I hope. Uh, status was actually made about Chuck Reeves and Magic Ninja Entertainment. Where Playboy had basically pledged his allegiance to both. He'll get into that. None of my business. My business is fucking Fright Fest. And fucking Last American Rockstars. But with what we have seen from Last American Rockstars, what I have seen, I'm telling you guys, it's going to be a dope show. And I know they're going to be playing Lit Live. And when you guys hear that song, it's my birthday. It was the thing I found out today I share a birthday with Eminem. Dude, fuck yes. Fuck yes. Dude, did you not see that cypher? That Eminem cypher was fucking awesome. Uh, not a, not a, not a Eminem Marshall Mathers fan, but a Slim Shady fan. I'm talking back before the Marshall Mathers LP when he did Bonnie and Clyde 97. That was fucking hilarious. I still love that song. If you listen real closely at the end, it's darker than you could possibly imagine. Dark shit. Go back and listen to it when we're done here. Uh, we're going to finish up here. It's not going to be too much longer, but, um, again, it's going to be a dope Halloween guys. Uh, what I was saying about Last American Rockstars, when Lit drops, I know Sam Sleazy, I know Captheon Flannel, myself, when I heard it, I was like, I thought of you guys. I was at that video shoot, hearing that song, singing the lyrics to that song. I'm not even, like I said, I'm not going to disclose any information about the lyrics of the video or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you guys right now, you're going to be like, that's our shit. That's our shit. Like, I'm not saying it's like body count by any means. But I'm definitely saying you guys can be like, that's that hardcore shit. Mark my words, it's amazing. Um, I I just can't wait for you guys to not even just see the video, but hear that track. And the album drops right around my birthday in fucking January, which I'm excited about, guys. Um, that album comes out, Year of the Sword comes out right around Christmas. What's up, Scottish Misfit? You guys are checking out Chuck's thing tonight, right? Um, like I said, I, I want to try and not cut into his time. It's already getting to be 10 o'clock. I know you guys are going to be fucking, I mean, down and out and out for the count. I don't want to, I mean, with Child's Play Ninja doing his thing, Chuck Reed's doing his thing. A lot of my viewers watch both. So, fucking, yeah. Dude, Scottish Misfit, we were just talking about the Hollow Wicked trailer. So, make sure you check that out. The Hollow Wicked trailer drop, man. It's actually dope. Who wants to see Jones' dog? Yet? No! We don't want to see the dog again. We want to talk about Hollow Wicked and fucking Fright Fest. Um, I wish I could swing it. It'd be fun to party with you. And maybe after we go to the Cider Mill. Cider Mill will probably be closed by about the time we get out. Um, unless you plan on bunking with us, brother. Um, which we I got some news on uh, the hotel that's been booked for us. We're staying at the Motor City Casino. Uh, I don't much care for the casino. That is a cute dog, though. It's a Pomeranian. She's all right. Um, damn, the fucking dog throws me off. But uh, we've got uh, fucking Fright Fest, guys. Like, snag up your tickets. Fucking 
do what you can. There was guys, there was a dude from Wisconsin. I think I told you guys this. A dude from Wisconsin gave me a ride back home. Dude went all the way from Wisconsin. He's not even a Lars fan, really. That's what blew my mind. The dude's like, I didn't even see the Savage Life video. He's like, I just heard they were doing a fucking opening thing. And I just felt like I had to come up from Wisconsin to be a part of it. That's fucking insane. Fucking insane. Uh, now he wants to come back out for Fright Fest. We're jamming and bumping Twisted all the way back. Like, he's a huge Twisted fan. I think he just really wanted to be part of the whole Magic Engine Entertainment thing. Which I think is huge. When's the lit vid come out? Dude, so, true story. If you guys actually go back and watch, you'll hear my voice. I didn't state my name or where I was from or anything. But I called King Gordy on Wicked 101. And I asked him about that. And I said, I was thinking right around the time the mixtape, you know. Because, you know, the mixtape would just come out, you know, feed a little bit more. He goes, no, 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 no. Lit's not off the mixtape. It's off the CD. Damn. Fucking cool. So, it'll probably be closer to that. I mean, Lex, uh, Lex the Hex, he's got his shit coming out. They're dropping Year of the Sword. Um, we've got, you know, a bunch of bundles that are up. Like, right now, it's pretty much convoluted over at fucking MNE right now, which is a good thing. I'm, I can't stress that enough. It's a good fucking thing. Everyone's getting their time which I think is extremely important to keep in mind. Uh, show the people that didn't see your Lars tattoo. Oh, for sure. I'm pretty sure you guys all saw it, but there she be. There she be. There's one side of her. And then... Yeah, this sucks. Yeah, right there. So if you guys see that, there's like all the detail inside the bandana. We'll try it like this without closing it. Fuck it. Oh, I don't know. Hold it. Hold it. They want to see your Lars tag. Can you see it? Uh, I can now. There we go. And if you. Thank you. You guys see that? It's all the fucking detail in it. I don't know how well you guys can see it right now. It's reversed. But yeah, that's the that's the Lars tag too. Hey, I'm hijacking your stream for a second. So what? Because oh. I want to show the cover. She has a punk rock jacket on. Yeah, I know. Can we talk about Fright Fest and all the wicked? Damn it. It's why you're all here. Look how punk rock your jacket is. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about what, guys? Hall of Wicked, Fright Fest, the shit that's coming up. And apparently my Lars tattoo. But um, anyways, when I was on Wicked 101, I called. That's how I got all the information. That's how I figured out when the release date was. That's how I figured out... Um, all that shit. That's how I knew about the tour, which is going to follow, which I'm really excited for. Uh, best believe I will be at that Lars fucking concert because we know there's going to be one in Detroit. And I did find out that uh, we need some punk news. Uh, punk news? Uh, fucking Sick of It All dropped a video today. So that's Aces fucking Sick of It All dropped it. Uh, Tis the season for that wicked shit. Dude, it is the fuck. Like I was saying, man, fucking October. It's the shit, man. Oh, and I don't know if you guys actually even got to see my fucking office yet, but if you look behind me, boo yeah, we got that Pulp Fiction poster, we've got the fucking Green Inferno poster, and if you actually look, just watch the Hollow Wicked trailer, it looks sweet as fuck. Yeah, it does. Like, they, the thing is, and this is what I was trying to get at earlier, it blows my mind that they didn't fucking promote it more. Like, you're going to do a fucking event like that, T minus three weeks, and then announce it? Come on. You should have... <laughs> You should have plugged it. I mean, people, I'm already sure. Oh, what, what, sick of it all? Dropped a vid. One of my favorite bands ever seen several times live. Yeah, they dropped a video, brother, uh, today. Um, it was actually all right. I liked it. It definitely doesn't feel like that old school sick of it all, but nonetheless. Um, yeah, really, really cool shit. I guess there is news in the punk world. Uh, why the fuck not? So, anyways, if you actually look, it's September 5th. Which was not the, which was supposed to be the release date for that. Uh, do more live streams that boost your sub count. You know, I, I like I said, I, I don't do this for like just like any sus subscribers. Like I'd rather have wolves and sheep. And you guys have been fucking showing me more love than you. I mean, I could ever possibly fucking imagine. So really, I do this shit for you guys. Like it's not the high quality shit or whatever. And there's this one guy I see, Con Man uh, six one seven, I think, and he does like all the WWE live streams and shit. Dude's really entertaining. Check him out. 
Um, but I try and go live just to basically drop some news before, like, you know, we get amped up for Chuck's thing before we do all this shit. And clearly the quality sucks. So I feel bad about that. Uh, this is like a $25, $30 phone, some shit. Cause my old one broke and I just need a fucking quick fix a wrapper. So here we are. Um, but yeah, like I said, guys, fucking, we've got, uh, we've got a dope lineup for Fright Fest. We got a dope lineup for Hollow Wicked. So no matter which side of the fence you're on, you're going to have a good time. Um, I felt like at the Twisted show that I went to in Nashua was a really off experience. And I definitely like gave that, that vote to Twisted to go to Fright Fest. Not to mention, again, those tickets were on sale back in June. Uh, before they made any real official announcement, they were already on ticket web, but I waited until they started talking about it a little bit after the debacle of the March death threats towards you have died down. Yeah, it's, it, it had nothing to do with the death threats that where I toned down or anything like that. Um, I've been stuck in my head in a really weird spot and I wasn't going to put that on, on you guys. Um, a lot of people have noticed the change in my demeanor and it's not for the best, but not for the worst either. Um, uh, it's, it just is what it is. And I'm definitely not trying to lose that mojo. Need to keep up the mojo. Um, I, I just want to talk about like some of like the key things that have happened. Um, I've been writing, uh, back to doing like two different books. Now I got one that I just started today. I'm still working on grains of chaos. He took his best off. Now they all, now they all, all that message isn't finishing up. Let's see. Am I able to see it? I don't have nothing to hate him for. Well, I explained that, didn't I? Um, pretty sure I explained why that was. Uh, if you guys saw, you guys want to see? You guys want to see why I'm hanging that bitch up? But not wearing her because guess what fades? Permanent marker. And I sweat because I like to go for a lot of walks and like to do some shit. So, I'm about to show you guys why I stopped wearing the vest. It's got nothing to do with the haters, by the way. It's got something to do with all the love I got. So, we will get into this closet here where she's nice and hung up. I love, uh, love M and E S K R S. Madden Sandy. Dude, is Madden Sandy still its thing? Or did everyone break away and go independent? Um, I know Kosher's was like affiliated, a part of it, whatever. But, um, yeah, I don't even know if Madden Sandy's still around. Yes, thank you. I will do that. That is what I'm in the midst of doing. So, let's start off with the obvious as to why I don't wear this. Now, this is the inside. Vesta Novus, your opinions that matter. Oh, dude, my opinions? I think my opinions are the one that matters. Anyway, here we go. Boom, yeah. You guys can see that? Now, he tried signing it up here. He was up against the wall signing it. He's like, it's so please fucking hold this up for me. I'm like, shit, man, well, I don't want to get in your personal space. And so the signature is completed in here. And as you can see, it is the inside of the vest. So with that being said, we're not going to wear this after Bazaar had signed it there. Like I said, we're good. I think Mars, no one left. Uh, and he's with Force 5. I remember when Daniel Jordan was signed to that label. He announced that on April 1st of 2013, I believe. So that was pretty cool. Um, now to show you guys the back. Boom. Here we go. You guys don't ever get to see the back, really. So this is where the lead singer Necrogoblicon signed. Kung Fu Vampire, Dan Deer, but that signed over it. He went, oh shit, that's another signature. So he fixed it up here because he showed up. He showed us love at the video shoot because he was doing a show that previous night, which unfortunately I couldn't make it to. And then you've got the King Gordy signature. And if you look closely, he signed on the studs. So that is why we don't wear the vest anymore. Um, yeah, those are actual signatures. Um, I got my picture taken with King Gordy. I use that as a thumbnail for one of my videos. Not just for bragging rights either. So there is that. Now to hang this bitch. Why is Fuiji signed to Psychopathic Records? You know, Psychopathic Records is going to do their thing. I'm not real familiar with Ouija. Um, I am familiar with this one song, like Ouija something or other, that actually features Gorilla Voltage. It's about as much as I know about anything Ouija. Uh, never listened to his stuff. I know Chuck's a fan. Uh, good on him. Um, I don't know, man. Like, 
One of the reasons why I got out of the whole horror course seems because there's so many bad rappers coming out and like doing desperate things. And the truth is, and I want to say this publicly, yeah, I pretty much hate auto tune anything. Yeah, I hear you. What up, Minor Kevin? So, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and fuck you if you don't like it, but Magic Ninja Entertainment was actually brought to my attention when I started watching Child's Play Ninja's video and all the hate that Magic Ninja was getting, which makes a guy like me really fucking curious. So I got really fucking curious, guys. Decided to check it out. Swagged hoof is worth a listen. Swagged tooth? Also, the guy named Swag Tooth, but Sam, you and I are pretty much on the same page as far as music, so why the fuck not? I will give that a shot. Matter of fact, let me type that into my YouTube right now while I got it up so I don't forget because I still haven't checked out uh, my tattoo. It's told me to listen to. Thank you. Same thing, dude. Yeah, so fucking all the hate is actually what got me over to Magic Ninja Entertainment. And the first thing that I heard from Magic Ninja Entertainment coming back into it was Gorilla Voltage. And I was sold at that point. Fuck yeah, because fuck, I've been a fan of Mr. Gray for quite some time, so. Boo yeah. Um, that other dude, he's fucking insane too. So let's see, swag tooth. Type that into my YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swag tooth. Uh, Alice Cooper Lettuce sounds like, or Dead York are like two songs I think would uh, catch my attention. So I will click on that, except everything I've heard is all auto-tuned from Swag Doof. I guess I'm willing to try. Uh, would you mean kind of like Suicide Boys? I like Suicide Boys. I like Dead Boys. Uh, Dead Boys, probably more so than Suicide Boys. Uh, another cursed fucking band, too. Uh, they had it rough in the fucking... Yeah, there's, a, there's actually a movie. I'm not even sure if it's still on Netflix. I know it was called uh, CBGB. And it's actually got um, Alan Rickman in it, which is insane. Dead Boys are on tour. That's nuts. It took a while for me to get into Gorilla Voltage. It took me two songs. It took me Grime and the uh, their subtitled song. Just try it. I promise it's worth it. It has a listening curve. But if you're from the Northeast, you'll get it. I am from the Northeast. I am from the great state of New Hampshire. So live reaction to what? Uh, Sweet Tooth or something? Well, for copyright purposes, I mean, fuck it. Why not? We're all here, right? And like I said, I don't want to cut into Chuck's time, so I want to kind of keep this short. But let's see. Swag Tooth, Alice Cooper, let us. The official video, even. Yep, going to try and see Dead Boys in Omaha. You lucky fucking cunt, you. I really want to see that. All right, guys, I'm not going to be able to hear you for a minute. I'm going to check out the song uh, Alice Cooper, let us. Uh, Kung Fu put Gorilla Voltage on Ebony, so cool by me. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the fact they got fucking talent, uh, this is actually a song with Playboy the Beast, Mr. Gray, and Mars, uh, and Murder the Innocents, so, oh, the music video is well shot, Swag Tooth, I still can't get over that, Swag Tooth, but yeah, anyways, cool fucking shit, guys, like, um, I got that song, one of my favorite parts is, uh, uh Left My Tongue Tasteless, it's pretty dope. Uh, Sid Jones from the White Mountains of New Hampshire, literally the forest. Yeah. Yes, I am. Why? Why? I see what you mean by listening curve, man. He's an Esham fan. I, I dig the hair, though, for sure. Joe Wiggles! What the fuck is up? Raised by wolves. And black bears. It definitely has that acid wrap. The fuck you live? Sup, Sid? What up, nobody, man? Uh, right now we're doing a live review of Swag Tooth, Alice Cooper, Let Us, the official video. Uh, it's definitely acid rap. Uh, dude's definitely a fan of Esham. Really used to be called Damn Dirty Apes. I honestly don't know which I like better. It or Apex. Uh, I feel the same way about that whole thing when it comes to Bizarre and King Gordy when they were the Davidians. 
No one too likes like it up. Um, like Bizarre and King Gordy have been making music together for like the longest time, and they've got great chemistry. Um, you know, Bizarre came up with the idea to do the song Justin Bieber, and Gordy was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like no questions asked. So they went and did that shit, which I think is brilliant. And so when it comes to Damn Dirty Apes and Apex, like same same, like it's they it's still them doing their shit. They alternate it maybe a little bit, uh, but like I said, King Gordy's still doing his shit with Sick Fucks. So King Gordy is still forever King Gordy. When he's with Lars, he's uh, the Black Axel Rose, Black Axel Rose, King Gordy. Um, so their lyrics might be different, but their tone hasn't changed, and their lyrics aren't that far fetched from what they were doing. So it's all right by me like they're just doing their fucking thing and when you guys hear that song lit you'll see what i'm talking about when i said you know i think they're testing new grounds you but then i said one of your first punks i ever found that also those horrorcore and shit thank you for being an inspiration man glad could finally catch a live stream oh dude like that means the world to me like i'm fucking humbled by that but yeah i got into punk rock i was into icp and then i i was introduced to dropkick murphy's and then i just kind of went and did that so i mean I couldn't get rid of my ICP roots, but every one of my high school was in ICP, so it kind of lost its meaning. Uh, like, it wasn't individual anymore for me, and the and I wasn't a fan of the kids that listened to it. Just eating dinner, because I am an appointed, an appointed cocksucker. Well, at least you're appointed at something. Uh, dude, what are you having for dinner, man? Uh, tonight, it's uh, fish for me with whatever sauce the lady's making. But, um... Yeah, I mean, Swag Tooth is definitely that acid rap. I'd probably have to give it a few listens, but yeah. Um, it's not bad. It's nothing that I'm like absolutely in love with. 2.6 thousand fucking subscribers. 1,000 likes, 163 dislikes. I mean, I'm not going to like or dislike it. Um, it's there. Leftover taco meat and scrambled eggs. Ooh, you like Turnstile and Trash Talk, Sid? Uh, turnstile and Trash Talk? I'm not sure. That is, I like to trash talk for sure. Like I will trash talk all day. Matter of fact, uh, there was shit that I wanted to say like immediately and I, and I need to get pulled to the side. They're punk bands. Oh, inquisitors in the house, dude. I love leftover crack. I fucking love leftover crack. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons we're going to fright fest is because I was made a promised to go see choking victim that fell apart and i was told that i could go to any show that i wanted anyone that i wanted of my choosing and i chose the twisted show before i knew lars was there i showed my girl the video goons from real wolf before lars was introduced and i showed her that gordy verse in Real goons, real wolf goons that she fucking did not like. Uh, and choking victim been dope. I love choking victim, man. I was pissed I missed that reunion tour, but guess what? It got paid back tenfold because after my girl heard Gordy and she was like, fuck that guy, I fucking hate that guy, I fucking hate that guy, I fucking hate those lyrics, like he's disgusting and vile. About two, three weeks after that, man. I find out Lars, Last American Rock Stars, is going to be on there on the 30th. So, I think his lyrics are vile. The thing is, if you actually like listen to Gordy's like interviews and shit, he says some vile shit. But when he's like one-on-one -on -one with the fans and shit, like he's really polite. Like, the dude called me fucking sir. Like, and, he refer and like he'll call women ma'am. Like, the dude's polite as fuck. Like, so it's like... It, it, it just blows my mind. It blows my fucking mind. I can't believe, like, how fucking cool he is with the with the people and shit. Like, wow. Uh, and then you listen to his lyrics and you're like, holy shit. Like, Bizarre and him, they did a song. And in one of them, he talked about how uh, he got AIDS from fucking Jean Benet. I was like, oh, damn, that's dark. I fucking love it. Tell you shortly, Monica is at work, so don't call her. Uh, I don't know who Monica is. I had no, no, no intentions of calling Monica. 
uh, hey, Captain Flannel, and actually, oh, I can watch the upload. Yeah, uh, fucking Inquisitor, we talked about Hollow Wicked's uh, 2017. Oh, dude, I got the Cheap Sex fucking uh, DVD, actually. Um, their, their, their documentary that they did. This the best. I hate I did that because it's a stereotypical thing in Tampa. It stands out, bro. Dude, we're straight. Like I said, James, we're cool. Like, I, I mean, fucking people want to trash me for my vest, they can. But I don't hold it against them. Like, I'm a grown-ass man. You're a grown-ass man. We're cool. No hate. Uh, check out the video Gossip by Swag, too. I will do that. Um, but, yeah, like I was saying, I, uh, I got the fucking cheap sex. Dude, thanks for the love on the vest. Um, don't know if you got a chance to see it, but fucking, we just pulled it out for the fucking signatures. Uh, I got the cheap sex documentary. Actually, it's got, uh, some of their unreleased tracks, which I'm sure by now are released. And it actually talks like in depth about the tragedies and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, definitely a cheap sex fan, especially with all the shit they went through. So if you don't believe me, give me a sec. Uh, damn, haven't seen cheap sex doc. <laughs> Brother, you're in for a fucking treat. So I got into this whole fucking thing where I definitely wanted to get into documentaries. Watch them on YouTube. And here we go. Right here. We got it. I personally love the vest. Had them all back in the day. Yeah, I want to build a new one. I definitely do. So guys, here we are. Dead today. Five years of cheap sex. They had like one or two left on Amazon. And I got it for Christmas. So. It's cool shit. Uh, I rock a combo mohawk. Dude, that's the shit. Um, that's the fucking shit. Yeah, there's some great punk stuff. Oh, dude, there's a lot of them. Uh, F is for family, shit like that. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, this too, the unreleased tracks, um, which I think is dope. Um, I love the vest. One of my homies gave me. One with OP Ivy, Op Ivy lyrics on it. Dude, I love Op Ivy. Respect all your opinions, but respect for you for being yourselves. Dude, respect to you, nobody, man, for sure. They just showed the doc about the punk place I went to a lot, the outhouse. Dude, uh, there was one that I saw about uh, the, the, the cuckoo nest, the crow's nest. Cuckoo nest, I think is what it was, um, in uh, California. You guys came over to our place. You, you want to sit down and watch the Germs movie? Oh, dude, what we do is secret, man. I know Sam Sleaze and I had that conversation. He's not a fan. Um, fucking, but I love it. I love that movie. It is definitely one of my favorites. Shane West fucking killed it. Something about Australia Punk. Watched it a bit. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I've not seen one on uh, Australian Punk. Black Flag. Mic drop. Yeah. Fucking, dude. Henry Rollins. Yeah. De oh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Black flag. The portable Henry Rollins. Boo yeah. Fucking yeah, like I said, guys, I'm into the fucking I'm into the punk. I'm into the horrorcore. Um matter of fact, I used to have a kosher show me the badge facts, which kosher wasn't really horrorcore, but his music, dude, I still have his catalog. Uh, White Girl Diaries, and uh, what the fuck was the other one? Black Gold, I think, something. Oh, hell yeah, Henry. Dude, fuck yeah, it's a good book, too. It's like his poetry, random thoughts and shit. It's cool. Um, there's actually some of his, another funny story, I was supposed to go see him at the Royal Oak Theater in Detroit. That fell apart. But there's some of the audio from that tour where he talks about Donald Trump and shit. Uh, there's some of that on YouTube as well, so. Definitely make sure you check that shit out. I'm uh, just here to plug some shit. Um, the Reapers is released. Um, so I'm excited. We tried to go to the spoken word last year, but didn't make it. Right. That's what I was just saying. We missed the spoken word. Uh, he's going back on tour. Um, 2018. Tickets already are on sale for that. So releasing an audiobook of your books. Some people that run labels and maybe will help you out and shit. Dude, I thought about doing that. Uh, problem is I'm like, I'm afraid that I'd like lose sight of what I'm doing. Uh, no, Sam, I am not watching the video at the moment. Um, uh, you guys are gonna have to message me. Uh, have you ever read see a grown man cry by rounds? It's more poetry. No, did you listen to, dude, do I listen to army of the pharaohs or Jedi mind tricks? Dude. Yes. I listen to AOTP and Jedi mind tricks. Fuck. Yeah, I do. 
Um, we talked about that a little bit. Self-titled, I actually think, does better with other rappers than he does on his own shit. Just my personal opinion. I've got some of Self-Titled's uh, solo shit. Not a fan. But, dude, oh my god. His fucking dump the clip. <laughs> dude, it is one of the funniest things. Like, that's one of the things I love about horrorcore and love about that fucking genre. Did you read a part of Descendant? Did you... Um, I did. I did uh, an excerpt, I think is what we should call it. Um, I did read a little bit about that. I don't always agree with Sid and either nobody man, but in my opinion, it's like buttholes. Everyone wants to show theirs, but don't agree on everything uh, to be uh, on everything to be homies. Sid is a good dude. You're a good. Du- you're a good dude too. Like you guys, I feel like what I wanted for my channel to be was where we could come together, discuss our uh, the things that we're interested in, because it's similarities that really bring people together. You know, I see. I think self and apathy are greatest duo ever. Dude, fucking apathy and self. Fuck yes. So my plan is for you guys, when the Reapers comes in, I can't believe I have to order my own book and fucking wait on it. I wrote the damn thing. But I'm told that people would want me to read it off of the book and not off the computer screen. So we're doing that with the fucking HD camera this time. So we're doing it. Uh, I will be reading the Reapers from that. That's what punk is, man. Everyone coming together and loving each other no matter what. It's about, I feel like it's also about individuality and how you are as a person, like a state of mind, uh, which is a great punk rock documentary, State of Mind, and another one I recommend, which is the first one to be introduced to, to punk, punk attitude. I feel like that's very, very important to keep in mind. Holy shit, I can actually keep the chat up like that. That is amazing. So yeah, to keep to keep all this in mind, guys, like it's great uh, to have music. Music brings people together. Uh, Henry Rollins even said it. He said, it's really hard to want to bomb somebody when you're listening to the same music. Like, it's really hard to want to kill the person next to you who's listening to your shit. Uh, Could Sid do a cameo in Mount Book Dings? Cameo? Yeah, I could do that. Uh, Thank you, Evan Flynn. Appreciate that. Uh, Yep, minor and I used to be... I have going to punk shows just to get into talks and arguments, debates with other punks. I like being involved with a collective independent uh, individuals. I'm loyal to my friends too, no matter if they stumble sometimes. Man, see, and that's what I really think this channel needs. And I really think that other people need to, need to take a little bit from this channel. Like I said, this is supposed to be a short fucking video, so I apologize to you guys. I know we've got fucking Chuck going live here in T-minus. Let's call it an hour because he goes on about 1130 and about this time. So we got an hour before Chuck, and I really don't want you guys to have to miss that. I don't even want you guys to have to miss Child's Play Ninja shit if that's what you like to watch. Um, I like to come in and talk about, like, shit, like, right off the fly. And I know we should schedule this a little bit better. That'll happen. I promise. Um, but uh, what were we talking about? Jeez, we're all over the place here. Uh, yeah, so when the Reapers comes in, I will do a little excerpt from that. Maybe instead of doing, like, a fucking audiobook, per se... It'll have like my facial reactions and shit like that. Like it's me reacting to my own book because I haven't read it all the way through. Simply had my girl do the editing. I did some of like the whole spacing thing, read a couple of scenes that I thought were fucking hysterical. So it would be like an honest reaction to my own writing from fucking seven plus years ago. That would be dope. Um, So you guys can actually see me as an author from like me seven years ago. So it's like a time capsule. So I hope you guys will appreciate that. Um, I know I will. If anything, I get a personal gain out of it, which I think is one of the reasons why people do art and write. I hope I'll have it by then. Uh, you're a good writer, no doubt. For sure, Inquisitor, everyone stumbles sometimes just to uh, just got on to be sure to learn from mistakes and bad choices. For sure. I'd rather watch your lives than Chuck's. Dude, you got to admit, though, Chuck talks about some shit. Like, I heard about the Lars camera being stolen, not even from Bizarre, but from Chuck. And had that not have gone up and I didn't know about the reshoot, guess who would not have been in a music video? You see what I'm saying? Like, you got to give the double his due. You like him or not. Um, Like I said, which is where I stand. Um, I actually got to talk with Mad Max, too. And I like I was saying on his channel, fucking Mad Max dropped a song years back called I Love These Drugs, which is hysterical. The intro is from um, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So... 
cool shit. Like that song's got a lot of fucking talent all over it, all over the board. Um, what days times work for you all collectively? I wonder if there's a day Sid could go live every week. I think he should do a segment like dinner and discussion with Sid Jones or something like that. Uh, yeah, whatever you guys want to see. Again, you guys have my Facebook. You guys have my Twitter. You guys have the fucking comment section. Feel free to do requests. Like, I can't promise I'll fill everybody's requests. But I will do my damnness. Like, I do this for you guys. Like, it's not just for me to feel better. And, yeah, I mean, granted, you guys are probably, like, the best therapist anyone could ask for. It's also much cheaper. However, I do this for you guys to keep you guys fucking, you know, entertained and shit like that. Keep you guys, like, up to date. Like, when I saw that Hollow Wicked thing drop, I'm like, that's one of those things. It's the elephant in the room. It's kind of got to get addressed. And I feel like that's important to address the obvious. Besides, I kind of wanted to have one up on Chuck and John's Play Ninja Key to first and talk about it. So, yeah, good shit. Um, fucking back to the whole AOTP thing, though, the, the lyrics that I really like. Um, L can't see me from where at, from where I'm at. I like the smell of napalm while I'm eating my Apple Jacks. Fucking self-titled verse and dump the clip is great. Uh, I'm in UK, so about five hours in front of you guys. Oh, shit, dude. I thought you were behind. My fucking bad. Um, I think I did that ass backwards, but I've also got French in me, so that's my excuse. Uh, evening time usually works for me, but I understand maybe not for everybody. Dude, if Inquisitor's five hours ahead, and we can make something work with that, in the evening would actually probably be best. Cap the on. Damn, so it's like 3 a.m. God damn, Inquisitor, you need to sleep. Jesus Christ, man. Like, you get less sleep than I do, which is bad. Um, But, yeah, like I was saying, uh, that's the important thing with, like, underground hip-hop and horror horror music. You've got to mix the talent with the the vile, the horror, the gore, like, the jaw-dropping lyrics and the humor. Like, Gallo's humor is my shit. And Abominations was actually my fucking thing. One? Uh, are you on Instagram, Sid? I am. You can find me at the real Sid Jones. I don't know. Instagram URL, but type in the real Sid Jones. Uh, my tattoo is the profile thing. I don't much upload on there or post pictures much like of not like, you know, it's usually on my Facebook shit like that, which I'm also really not so good at updating. Mostly I've been focusing on the shit here on YouTube and what's been going on here. And of course my writing kind of got in the way, which fucked me all up. I am inquisitor. Can't turn my mind off to sleep. So always up late. Uh, fuck yeah, self-title really shines in AOTP. For sure, my sleep is shit. That's not working. Uh, Got to back to work. All right, shit, man. Fuck yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, work will definitely keep you busy. Um, yeah, whoop, whoop, nobody, man. Um, Yeah, fucking, fuck it. Whoop, whoop to you guys. Why the fuck not? I posted the video on my Instagram today of me and Sid at the Apple Orchard feeding goats. Follow her uh, to see grass and not meat and not carnage. Like, so follow her if you like lettuce. Yeah. Hashtag lettuce. Uh, best social media. Fuck the rest. Dude, I, I try and focus on, on YouTube because I feel like if I'm on Instagram constantly and I'm doing all that shit, then I'm doing exactly what I've been against for the longest time. So there's that. Um, but as far as like. The music in fucking 2017, as far as the music in fucking October, as far as all the events that have gone down, like that's some shit like, and, and, and you gotta think of it like this. Why couldn't Child's Play Ninja make it to Hollow Wicked, Chuck make it to fucking Fright Fest, and then the two fucking either A, duke it out, or B, go have drinks, or C, both fucking duke it out, then have drinks. Like, I mean, at least that shit would be done and over with. So, Yeah. I don't think I follow you on Instagram. I'll be surprised if not. Oh, dude, no, you follow me. I fucking, I followed you first. My girl followed you and da 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 so on and so forth. So it perpetuated. Uh, what is there a bit of Sid at Sino petting goats and follow me? <laughs> yeah, it was from the Cider Mill today. Um, there's also, I don't know if we caught a video of it or not. There was a fucking fat hog. So that was cool. Fat pig thing. He was fat. All of them were fat and overfed. Fat. You know what that means, though? Bacon. Um, so, um, back to the whole Fright Fest thing, Lars thing. Like, I'm telling you guys, 
hit up Fright Fest, hit up fucking Detroit. Um, it, it's the shit. And, it, and a lot of it's in fucking walking distance. If you plant the fucking area and you're like, okay, this is where I'm at. Like, it's not a far walk from anything. Um, it's actually, none of it's all that far from the fucking Greyhound station. And if you go to the Greyhound station, catch like a fucking Uber, a cab, a Lyft, whatever to the show, catch it to your hotel. Of where does it stand at? Um, pretty sure that like the Holiday Inn and shit like that's going to be packed. But I mean, it's whatever. Like if you guys can fucking drive out and make it by all fucking means, uh, Steve and I took a Greyhound bus from Saginaw to Detroit and then just picked a area to walk in and then we made it to the film one that was back in 08 uh chuck and cpn and a tree the horror um i mean like i said though like there there's gonna be everything for everybody in detroit instead of people saying it might be a war zone because you've got fucking hollow wicked and fright fest in the same paired nights like fuck it if every if the if the twizzlers gotta go fight the juggalos and vice versa then by all means at least fucking whatever it's sorted out and figured out whatever and I get some popcorn and a couple of beers in me and I'm good to watch it. But I don't understand the fucking hate with like, okay, I get the politics with the music artists, but with the fans, I don't get it. Um, I, I, I feel like that there's a lot of people that are way over the top and a little passionate. No names mentioned. <coughs> CPN. Uh, <coughs> Crazy McCormick. But their feelings are hurt by Twisted doing all this. But Child's Play Ninja was the one that had said, keep the politics out of the music. Neither one made good on that. I like CPN and Chuck for different reasons. I don't really have a dog in that fight. Me neither, but the ones that got a fight, they got a fight, in, 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 a dog in the fight, but blah, 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 uh, is Chuck and Child's Play. Psychopathic soldier right here. Dude, fucking rep for your team, for sure. But just because I don't like the new music now doesn't mean I still don't have fucking Hell's Pit Fuck this. Hold on a minute. Hold on a fucking minute. One fucking minute. Let's let's sort this shit out right fucking now. Where is it? Where is it? I know I've got it. I know I've got it. Do you want to know how I know I got it? Because I've been fucking listening to it. That's how I know. Okay. Now these, by the way, are all purchased. And you'll know that because there's the art with it. Okay. What is all that? Can you guys see that? What is all that? That's Carnival of Carnage, Dirty History, Riddle Box, Ringmaster, Great Malenko. Hang on. And then if I open up the new folder here, that's Hell's Pit and the Wraith Shangri-La. I listened to the music. I didn't go back and delete it. I kept that shit. I have the fucking Joker cards. Wouldn't be any of it without ICP, period. Dude. I don't have issues with ICP other than the fact that I don't like the music that they're doing right now. However, as you can see, I've got it. As a matter of fact, you know what else I got? I got fucking Hate Me, Cross Your Skin, Skit, Scapegoat. You know who that is? That's Child's Play Ninja's music. Yeah, you guys saw it. I wasn't prepared to do this live thing. I didn't know the Hollow Wicked trailer was going to drop. I didn't think the video was going to be this long. How would I prep that? You know what else I've got on here? I've got Twisted's new Nightmare in its entirety. I've got fucking King Gordy's music on here. I've got Mars's music on here. I've got the best of Head PE, the music that I was reviewing. Uh, I still like Twisted music. I mean, I think that Kill Somebody video was the best horror core in a while. I agree. Same. I just like Ebony at the moment. That's all. Dude, same here. Again, it's music. Like, if I even said it, whoever put King Gordy on their label had my vote i mean that's what i had said i stuck to it kept my fucking word on that um i love fucking king gordy and bizarre they're like a great duo i really don't care about their beefs i'm down with cyan m and &E, but outside of light and hoodoo m and &E dropping more fire lately that's what i'm saying i like jump steady that teach their own uh captain actual russell simmons tried to push for the first horrorcore music it was his nephew band and he was trying to have his rap version of slayer i mean fucking be innovative have a fucking whatever about it like i think that's the fucking shit i really do i think that for somebody to be innovative it's like i told the guy at mne thank you 
Uh, sorry, I'm old. Dude, we're all old. Uh, Flatliners. Okay, Flatliners, not bad, but uh, I would not go see the fucking remake of the movie Flatliners. I like the original a lot. Matter of fact, there was this dude, Cody and I, uh, my buddy Wade's son, and we were fucking, we talked about Flatliners, like, a lot. And we weren't stoned, we were stone cold sober, talking about that movie for, like, two or three days. Like, the, the first one, like, fucking blew our minds. Like, we rewatched it, like, two or three times, and just had this, like, really in, like, d- just this deep, deep, deep conversation. Um, he's talking about the rap group, I'm talking about the movie. I was down with ICP through the Joker cards. Dude, I was fucking down with ICP. Okay, so I'm going to tell this story again. So I got involved in the ICP because I was curious of what one of my boys, who actually used to beat the shit out of me and hit me with a steel chair and taught me how to fight, Nick Nick Garrett, he handed me a couple of burn CDs and said, here, check them out, see if you like them. And he did. So this dude became my fucking music dealer. I would buy fucking burn CDs off of him. Um, and then my dog died and I made my mom buy me uh, the Wraith Shangri-La because she really hated my music. Like, yeah. So fucking, yeah, I got, uh, so my first album that I purchased was Shangri-La and I got into it right at the age of 13. Not my fault, the, the, like the year I was born and shit, like my bad. But yeah, Wraith Shangri-La and, and I guess back in the day we were called wraith but I never heard that term until years and years later when I was on YouTube because there was no other Juggalos except for me and that dude that used to beat the shit out of me. And then I started listening to music and then he stopped because he hated me, I guess. I don't like uh, Cameron versus humanity. Uh, Flatbush zombies. <laughs> Flatbush zombies. Uh, I feel the same way, Sid. I would love to like the next Joker's card, but I don't have high hopes. Dude, that's the thing. Like, They hyped up Mighty Death Pop for two years, okay? That's where I drew the fucking line because I bought all three copies of Bang, Pow, Boom. Like, all my friends and I fucking listened to it. That's all we did was listen to that music. And then... I was like, fucking, for what? Like, there's three songs we listen to. And we all started somewhere. I agree on that. Like, you can't even really disagree on that. Like, that's a fucking fact. You gotta start somewhere. Like, there were some people who got in because of Bang, Pow, Boom. Like, I'm sorry, To Catch a Predator is still the shit. Uh, there's a lot of songs on Bang, Pow, Boom that I really fucking like. There was one song on Mighty Death Pop that I liked, um, Night of the Chainsaw. And the music video was fucking hilarious. Um, but, yeah. You're going to hype me up for two years. You're like, completely sober. And it's going to be the darkest, most fucking out of this world, controversial album, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Go out and buy it in two years. Awesome. You dropped an infomercial and then fucking two years hyped it up. And that's what we got was Mighty Death Pop. I only heard about the Juggalo stuff when Twisted got bigger this year. (laughs) The CP are back, but I was a metalhead freak. Dude, fucking, I got into MNE because of all the fucking hate behind it. Like, I would not have even known about it until people started bitching about it. Then I was like, oh, no, I'm curious. Like, you basically sold me to MNE is what you did. Whatever. I'm happy, clearly. I have a fucking Lars tattoo on my arm. Yeah, I'm fucking happy with that shit. But I would have had it regardless. Had they had signed a Psy or MNE, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Well, it was before ICP. I mean, ICP started the juggle of movement. Twisted, let's be real. Twisted has money. Start m and because of the money they made on ICP. That's fine. But that would be the same as me saying, like, fucking, I was able to jump off of this fucking job because they gave me a good fucking reference or because I made money at this job and then I got to start off my own thing. I'm not going to fucking give credit to that fucking corporation my entire life either. You see what I'm saying? Like, that, that's a double-edged sword. Really touch and go, especially with me. Like, I'm an asshole. Uh, I remember old schoolers giving me hell coming in on Malenko when literally me and my boys were the only ones I knew who knew them. Right. And do you guys remember the whole fucking uh, gold pendant and silver pendant thing when they had like the, the, the 24 karat gold, I think it was, Hatchet Man, and then you had like the the sterling silver Hatchet Man necklaces. And if you had the gold Hatchet Man necklace, like you were above the ones with the sterling silver one. I know because this tattoo one that I got, hang on a minute, I don't want to close out of anything, that one, right there, that hatchet man, 
was off of my fucking pendant. Like, he just shocked over it, put that exact shape right there, boom, there's my pendant the rest of my life. 50 bucks, cheap to do. And fucking my best friend picked that spot because that's where he always grabbed my arm because he was blind and he didn't want to work out on the stick all the time. I don't fucking blame him. Uh, I was his eyes and okay, he was also kind of my eyes because I'd always lose shit and somehow a blind guy was able to find it before I could. Really sad. But it's true. Uh, got some funny stories about Steve and I. Uh, one time I handed him a pizza box and said, can you read me the instructions while I throw it in the oven? My bad. For years, I, th- I was ashamed to be Malenko era juggalo. Dude, <laughs> I'd rather, pr- I'd probably, if I had the choice, I'd rather be like a Malenko era than a fucking Wraith era. Like, in all fairness. I really wanted that Malenko CD for Christmas one year, though. Um, I really wanted that Malenko CD, and I didn't get it. Not until years later. Uh, I first heard any juggalo shit in nine, uh, 98, ninth grade. My buddy was singing Jamie's verse from 85 bucks an hour down the hall at school. My name is Jamie Madjax and I got balls. Blew my mind. Did you like the secondhand smoke video? I liked the secondhand smoke video. Uh, it was definitely a throwback. Um, I thought it was dope. It could have... <sighs> In comparison to their new shit, like I see why they did the black and white and like it not being graphic and gory and like all detailed and shit. And that's because it's supposed to be their old school shit. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to go and do your new school shit on your old school. Like, that'd be really weird and really, like, a time lapse. Really bizarre and saturated. So I think it was the perfect tone. And I think they did a damn good job for what they were doing. So kudos to them. It felt cheap without the face paint. But when they did Most Tasteless, they didn't have face paint. So I get that. Uh, to have face paint for an album that you did that many years ago, your very first album like that, um, I still have my first release, Malenko. It's so worn and scratched, I bought a second to rip on my MP3. Yeah, so I fucking, I bought Malenko, Steve bought Riddlebox, I bought Carnal the Carnage, he bought Ringmaster, and then I bought both the Wraith albums. And then I gave them to him to keep, and then I just kept the digital ones. And when I lost my old laptop, he still had the hard copies, and he still had the digital packs. So when he came to visit me for the last time I ever got to see him, I got to put those CDs on my new laptop. And it's probably one of the reasons why I never deleted them either. Like, I've got Hatchet Warrior on here. I've got Dirty History. The only one I don't have is Mudface. I bought that album the day it came out. They only had like three copies of it in the store. Not left, but three copies in general. Health Pro is the best ICP album, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I would fucking do that. Uh, I've literally been down from Jump with Twisted. I bought OG Most Tasteless when it dropped. Love Murder, Murder, Murder. I'm not a huge... I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of Most Tasteless. Um, it took me a while to like Green Book. Uh, I named my first boxer murder after Twisted's murder, murder, murder. Dude, and that's the shit. Like, that's what I'm saying, guys. Like, whether you like them or hate them, you're pissed off at them, whatever. Like, they're still part of it. Like, it's the same way I look at ICP. Like, they still kind of got me into it. Do I like their new music? Fuck no. Do I care for their politics? Not necessarily, but I don't fucking hate them. Um... I hate their new music, and I hate what the fan base had turned into. Um, and I think that that's where a lot of my taste had come from. It's it's dark, gray, murky waters that I tread in every day with these people. And I never wanted to come back as a Juggalo YouTuber either. That wasn't my plan, but I guess once one, always one. Is the way I see it, I guess. Like, I, I, I tried doing, you know, punk rock reviews and shit like that. But at the end of the day, I always come back to the fucking horrorcore shit. No matter what. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, I got three tattoos. Two of which are fucking horrorcore. And I've got a germ circle. Like, that tells you a lot. So. You gotta give love to the music. And fucking kudos to my boy Joey for introducing me to King Gordy's music. Like, that's the shit. That's the real shit. Like, I'm fucking happy about that.
I apologize, guys. I'm going to take you guys into the dark with me if we're going to continue this. I feel bad we're starting to cut into Chuck's time in about T minus 45 minutes. So I want to try and cut this off. Fuck it. Let's call it 11. We'll end this at 11. I just want to go outside into the dark and have a cigarette. And you guys are going to come with me. I have all of the OG House of Crazies cassettes and CDs in half breed, which I tracked down because of Twisted. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, they put out dope shit. Do you like the music now? I mean, I can't even say I'm a fucking huge fan of their music that they've got today. But what I can say is this. I can honestly say without a shadow of a doubt that they have put out music that I've enjoyed listening to. Uh, there was only one song I actually liked off of New Nightmare. I'll tell you that right now. And that was Down With Us. I love that song. Still love that song. Hang on, I missed that chat thing. Uh, I'm going to crash out soon, but I'm glad I got this live. Dude, dude for sure. The rest will be up tomorrow. Inquisitor, you have yourself a good night. Stay safe over there in England, brother. I have an extra shake of butt. But yeah, I mean, it's not... Is it where you came from? Yeah. But... At the same time, I'm not going to thank 7-Eleven for where I'm at today. Like, there's a lot. there. That's just like a lot of ground that I managed to do between then and now. And metal? Yeah, I... So, if you want to go back that far, I still think Abominations is phenomenal. Dude, everyone thinks Abominations is phenomenal. That album really brought together Gallows Humor for me. And I consider that, like, not the mainstream of Gallows Humor, but, it, like, it taught me a lot about, like, my expectations for Gallows Humor. I discovered Abominations before fucking... More metal, to be honest. Dude, there's some really good fucking metal bands. Like I was telling people, I've recently gotten into Power Wolf and Sabaton. I do have it later. Mm -hmm. Like fucking Sabaton and Power Wolf. Like, I love that shit. Uh, good. I would say at least 8% of your followers are Juggalos. And no matter what side of the divide they pick. So I would say, yeah, you kind of fucked on not wanting to be a Juggalo YouTuber. Uh, yeah, I could, I could see that. The darkness was far better. It was nice to find someone with wide music interests. Dude, dude, okay. Wide interest? Okay. I actually showed my girl this. She's not sure how to feel about it, but there's a band called, uh, I'll make sure I'm not saying the wrong one here, a Bad Seed Rising, and it's a song called uh, Wolves at the Door. Check that shit out. I, I rock Wait, that the, shit. The chick band? That's the chick band. I fucking love them. I was just surprised that you liked that kind of music as well. Suited them and start again. Or I could, unless you delete the channel and find a new synonym again. I tried that, and I always come back to this one yeah. for whatever reason. Just keep your old one. It's like me. I have my old one. It used to be about makeup. I wouldn't talk about makeup now, but I'm going to keep my old channel just because. Right. Well, that's what I'm glad I kept this it. one. Yeah. I'm glad I kept this one because it also shows personal growth with all my accomplishments and my fucking walks of life that I had taken. So, yeah. in a sense, to vlog through my life. So, if you want to get deep on that. But yeah, Bad Seed Rising, Wolves at the Door, and another one. Actually, uh, I'm referencing in a couple of my books is uh, Barnes Courtney, uh, Hands, which is another great track. Like, I listen to that shit. I mean, it's not, I mean, I, I fucking listen to uh, Robin Loxy, and he's got a song out called uh, uh, God Will Cut You Down, and it's different from Johnny Cash's verse version in a sense with uh, one verse that i really like it said broadside is coming want to come down and go yeah let's go see broadside is that your girlfriend said yes that is my girlfriend redhead stepchild that is my can girlfriend you move the words in my chat i can't see him. that's okay they can see you i can't see step towards the door what you didn't close out of it did you no you did okay we're good I'm 46. It's because you love us no matter how much you hate us. I don't hate you guys. Is she down for tag team action? No, she is not redhead stepchild. No, thank you. Yeah, she says no thank you. Uh, not that I hate you guys. I hated the way that the fan base had turned into. Like, you guys are cool blokes. Like, I fuck with you guys. But, like, the fan base in general had changed from what I had known it to be. Um, that could have been because there wasn't a whole bunch of them. But uh, now, for the record, we all know now that I don't live with my mom. So, 
hey, accomplishments. We're good. Uh, that goes both ways. I mean, I am more watching and commenting, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm down for one one. I'm sure you are redhead stepchild. That's not gonna happen either. But good call on that. Um, fucking yeah. Let's a uh, little bit of light on the subject with the shitty fucking quality here. But anyway, fucking it, it all boils down to like horror cores in my blood. Like horror core came before punk rock did, and punk rock to me was like the most important part of it. And then horrorcore just kind of surfaced back up. What makes me really angry is when Chuck calls himself a juggalo when all he does is shit on juggalos. Yeah, I shit on juggalos too, but again, it's like, there's different generations of it, you know? I mean, there's fucking, there's a lot of shit to go with it, you know? I mean, same with like some of the punks too. I mean, it's with any group. Like, there's some that just kind of like ruin it for you. Like, give you a for instance, um, My boy saw this fucking homeless guy fucking walking up to him and like bugging him and shit when they were trying to pump gas up in Flint. And he was fucking like sketchy as shit. He was wearing a Johnny Cash t-shirt. Now he's got a bad fucking association with fucking that particular Johnny Cash t-shirt. Like it's, it's an association thing. Shit. I had also called fam. I thought was down uh, bail on me when shit got hard. Dude, that happens with everybody. Like that's with every group. Like it's not even just the juggle. It's not even just about bailing. It's just about like, I don't want to say the maturity level, but just the way they are. Like, I told the story. This fucking one girl, uh, she comes in, Patchet Man on her necklace, Patchet Man tattoo. Fucking, we were chit-chatting about the fucking march and shit. And we had the same fucking agreements on it that it wasn't as what we had hoped it would be. And then I meet this other one who's like, whoop, whoop, and all fucking like in my face. And she's fucking dirty and fucking barefoot in the store. Like, that's fucking gross. That's nasty. To me, juggalo equals individuality. Dude, everybody is individual. But the problem is you've got people that don't think that way. I am actually more punk than a juggalo, but it's claim both. And the metalhead and country boy, you can be the one thing. You can be an individual. Uh, The metal community can be very elitist at times, too. Oh, dude, fucking so, like I said, it's everywhere. Um, I actually had some good times at metal shows. My very first metal show, only metal show, was uh, Alestorm. That's A-L-E-S-T-O-R-M. I got to see them uh, before they had dropped uh, No Grape But The Sea. Uh, do more than one thing. Dude, fucking be be what you are and fucking listen to what you want. like, And say what you want. Like That's where I stand. And they put on a good fucking show. I got to meet, I mean, all of Necrogoblicon signed my fucking studded vest. Like, I love metal. I'm with you on all that, cat. Uh, I dig pirate punk rock. Dude, I fucking, I'm still a grunge kid. I fucking dig all of it, man. Like, I consider fucking, uh, like, grunge is one of those things, though, like uh, Henry Rollins had put it. He said, when mom and dad knew what grunge meant, it's gotta go. So the term grunge is like, it it really had like a really short shelf of, okay, okay, back. Well, I don't feel so old. I was the oldest at the Melvins last week. Probably. I mean, fucking, that's shocking to me. And Melvin's been around for a while. Uh, he, he should be on soon. Uh, yeah, but metal is also very welcoming. I also say punk preaches unity. Metalheads actually practice it. Yeah, I mean, fucking, we saw what happened. I don't even know if that page is still alive, but the I Heart Power Violence page, I think, is dead now, guys. And that's where I saw, like, a lot of the whole elitist thing. I love all kinds of music in a way, if it sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I'm really curious to know about the fucking... I love the Melvins. I I fucking... I I have no idea what happened to the I Heart Power Violence page. I really don't. Like, that shit's gone. At least, Or maybe they blocked me. I don't know. Uh, Older guys who say ICP isn't even rap. Uh, It's grunge metal. I mean, that's how they perceive it. Exactly, they were home when I got into them in the early 90s. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's music that's been around for a while, but just because you still listen to it, like, it's it's the shit, but you're not going to see, like, Leftover Crack and Choking Victim come dropping, like, a new fucking album. They're just going to keep playing their old shit. Same with, like, a lot of other things. The, uh, your punk show there, like, who is uh, the supposer in the metal show, or in, like, what, or, like, what up metal? Coming in party, bro. Like, totally did a video. I'm... It's going to finish up. Antifa has been silent lately. The reason why Antifa has been silent lately is because the media stopped talking about them. I mean, there's some people that still shit on Antifa, but they're still around doing their thing. Metal has the history, thinks so we can be very loyal on certain subjects like Bieber. 
Melvin's still putting out new, but they are back underground. There's a lot of bands that are doing that. It's not like Scheme 95, so I can see the grunge metal. Right. Or the grunge metal label. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you got to think, like, uh, punks, metalheads, they were listening to ICP, like, inside of their catalog. A lot of people listen to other music inside of that catalog. And I had to learn to like other music. Uh, I just seen Melvin about a month ago. Fucking kill it. Man, you guys are fucking lucky. Get all the good shows. But, I mean, I've been to... I've seen the Murphys three times. I got to see the Briggs. Uh, matter of fact, funny story about Sick of It All. They were replaced by the Briggs because the lead singer had laryngitis. And I got the email... Uh, this was back in the MySpace days. I got the email from Dropkick Murphys. They said, sorry to everyone who purchased tickets. Sick of It All will not be there for the rest of the tour. The Briggs will fill in. And I fucking love the Briggs. I fucking... My dick throbs at the sound of the fucking Briggs plan. I still love Faith No More. Mike Patton has the sickest range of weirdo shit and vocal talent. Yeah, I don't mind Faith No More. Yeah, King Buzz still plays his guitar like driving a dump truck. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, they haven't lost their touch. Like, a 90% of it's muscle memory, too. But fucking, it, it's insane to me, like, just how much the music fucking changes and grows. It's insane to me. I think it's important to note that there's so much music out there, like, you don't have to, like, like, Child's Playing Ninja always references, he's like, well, there's people that listen to ICP, but they've been listening to, like, the typical fucking shit. I'm like, not all of them are like that. Wide range juggalos don't do that shit. They listen to a little bit of everything. And punks are the same way. Metalheads are the same way. Even if they consider it a guilty pleasure and they don't want people knowing it's on there. Like, uh, if you guys ever hear those bands, Bad Seed Rising, Barnes Courtney, Robin Loxy, like... You guys would be shocked to know that I not only listen to that shit, but jam hard to it. People viewed my video on Instagram of you feeding the goats more than 30 times. Oh, damn Daniel. Yep. Sit down, being a fire boy. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, shit. What time are we at here, guys? We are at 10.57, so I'm going to cut this off at 11.00. Give us a half hour to recuperate so we can go catch in on Chuck. Like I said, I don't want to fucking impede on anybody. I try and be respectful. Uh, whether you guys like Chuck or not, I dig his shit. His video last night was kind of meh. But uh, I'm hoping he talks about some more controversial shit, talks more about some of that underground shit, uh, pissing people off. I mean, that's what I like to do. Um, it's going to be some. It'd be a good fucking time. I like listening to it. Yeah, I listen to a lot more underground hip-hop than I do juggalo music, but I've been listening to juggalo shit longer. That's the thing, man. Like, I got sick of listening to ICP, Twisted, Blaze, ABK. So I had to go and find new music. Outcomes? AOTP. Army of the Pharaohs. That kind of shit. Like, that's because I was looking for something new to listen to. I mean, you could only listen to the same fucking song so many fucking times. Like, before you get fucking sick of it. You know what I mean? Even if you like it, you're like, I ain't got to listen to something different. Like, look at my fucking Pandora. I mean, if I was a way to fucking screen it, whatever, I'd show you guys all the fucking stations I got. Fucking leftover crack. I've got Dropkick Murphys. I've got Rancid. I've got Powerwolf. I've got Sabaton. I've got Robin Loxy. I've got fucking the guy who did the intro song for Sons of Anarchy. I've got fucking all sorts of shit, man. I've got comedians on there. Um, I've got... Bad Seed Rising. I've got Barnes Courtney on there. I've got another band, uh, Pretty Reckless. Another uh, female band. Uh, ZZ something or other. I always forget her name. ZZ something. And then uh, this other chick called Dorothy. Uh, she puts out some cool shit too. Uh, my playlists are all over the place too. I still love Suicide. Especially Ice Pick Willie. For sure. Any of you heard Mudvayne? <laughs> yes, Inquisitor. We've heard Mudvayne. Uh, my first introduction to Mudvayne was when I got Headbangers Ball Volume 1, and stupid me, I got the edited version. Uh, yeah, I love Riddle Box, but I can't hear it every other day. No shit, right? Hell yeah, Mudvayne. Um, fucking, yeah, that was actually, like, that's what I like. I like compilation albums. Well, back when I was a kid, because we didn't have the internet, like we do now. But fucking, like, compilation albums were, like, the best way to discover fucking music and like uh, the b side of fucking headbangers ball was i thought was even more dope than the fucking a side like i'm sorry cradle of filth mannequin i don't care who you are that song's dope and the music video's dope and cradle of filth is the shit um there's another one uh fucking uh 
Mandibles was the name of the song. I forget who sang it. That was also, that was like my first introduction to like rap fucking metal. Uh, I love comps and soundtracks for low budget film. Oh, dude, fucking absolutely. Uh, matter of fact, my buddy, he listens to Gogo Bordello. And he figured out who Gogo Bordello was when he said, when he watched the movie Wrist Cutters, which is based off of a short story, uh, Wrist Cutters, which is in the uh, the bus driver who wanted to be God. Dog fashion disco is cool. I love Cradle of Filth. Oh, dude, fucking Cradle of Filth, man. Um, fucking, like I said, mannequins, my shit. Um, they've got, uh, I I don't even know. Like I listen to a lot of like music on my Pandora, and I'll confuse bands um, and tracks because it's like the last one that i looked at or whatever um login is another good one uh fucking going east i think is the name of one of their songs sailing east damn i'm going to go go bordello at the end of october you fucking cunt fucking cap beyond going to all these kick-ass fucking shows dude i love go go bordello like i discovered them through risk cutters gypsy punk fuck yeah um but you guys gotta think like there's so much shit out there as far as music goes Fucking, just check, check it out, fucking sample it. He, he doesn't like hurt from Johnny Cash. Every time it comes out in his band door, he turns it off. I can't stand that song. Like, I don't mind fucking Johnny Cash's later shit where he's, like, really focusing on death and shit like that. It, like, dark shit, but I was not a fan of Hurt. Uh, I just, I, I can't fucking do it. I've tried, and I fucking can't. I can't do it. I tried. I tried. Uh, never seen Go Go Live, but I bet they put on a killer show. Oh, dude, I bet you they fucking do. My buddy, the the same guy who I told you discovered Go Go Bordello, he saw them up in Maine and some other band that was very similar to Go Go Bordello up in Maine. But uh, shit, there's a, there's a lot of good shit out there, man. Um, there's one uh, there's one band, Stanfields. Okay, here's the song that I've been fucking bumping as much as I've been bumping. Um, pretty reckless, bad seed rising, and Barnes Courtney. It's from the Stanfields. It's called Federal Hall. Dude, listen to Federal Hall from the Stanfields. It's got that fucking um, uh, Steve Earle with like um, with like punk to it. Like you think Dropkick Murphys and Steve Earle doing a collab together is what it sounds like. It will make your dick hard and your clit throb. I promise you. Never been much of a metalhead, but I grew up with a bunch of local metal bands in Everett, Washington, and they were cool. Dude, I bet G.G. Allen was a genius, too. Dude, I am from G.G. Allen's home state, man. I fucking brag about that shit. Fucking G.G. Allen, man. He was from uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. And, oh, man, what I wouldn't have given. I'd probably both my testicles to see fucking G.G. Allen. The documentary, um, We're the Allens, should be coming out soon. I know it's on tour right now all over Europe and shit. We're cutting it over time. Fuck it. Chuck will be fine. I mean, I'm still going to tune in. I'm sure you guys will still tune in. I mean, I hope you guys tune in. I want to see what's going on. So I definitely want to cut this short before the 1130 mark. I want to see what I have to say. <laughs> GG was a maniac. That's an understatement. GG Allen was like a fucking, was like the serial killer of punk rock. I've had a compilation vinyl uh, that has stuff from Al Green to Black Sabbath. It has the spinners and Ladies' Nights and the Pips. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fucking, there's dope music out there, guys. Like, and on the compilation shit, like, you can't go wrong. There's one that came out, Punks Unite, Leaders of Today. I've talked about this album before. I'll talk about it again. 32 songs, 32 bands. And that's when I really got deep into punk rock. Oh, I like that serial killer. Uh, I compared Lars to Gigi. Yes, you fucking did. And it's brilliant. That is a brilliant analogy. Like, fucking, hold on a second fucking hailing to you right now for that fucking reference like that's the shit man fucking and the thing is is king gordy listens to like iggy pop and the stooges he listens to these people and he said in his interview he's like i'm a rock star like i'm a rock star that happens to do hip-hop but i like the fucking shit I'm like, fuck yeah fuck yeah show and love the fucking iggy pop and the stooges like any hip-hop artist who shows love to iggy pop and the stooges deserves to get his dick sucked by any girl that walks past him, all right? Uh, yes, he did cough, and I liked that, too. Dude, fuck yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, we all listen to different shit. We all listen to different music. Like, I hope we check out each other's fucking music. Danzig, fuck yes, Danzig. I mean, that goes without saying. Um, By the way, his new album was dope. I didn't, I fucking, I slipped up again and didn't do a fucking album review on that way too late now, but 
Anyone like Ska or Ska Punk? Oh, dude, I fucking love Ska Punk. Oh, my God, I love Ska. Um, Leftover Crack, I consider to be Ska, actually. Um, So You Want to Be a Ka? Yeah, that's a Ska song. Um, Fucking 500 Channels for Choking Victim. Um, Fucking Real Big Fish. Um, Dude, I like Less Than Jake. I fuck with them. Um, Like, there's a lot of Ska bands that I actually enjoy listening to. Um, Fucking The the, um, Interrupters. Oh, man. I have to be really drunk to like Ska. Ska is definitely on the plate. Check out Three Chord Killer on YouTube or Facebook. They're dope. Only dudes I grew up with that are all still together. No neighbors lead singer's uncle. That's dope. Uh, Saw Corn open for dancing in a small venue in 93. Damn, you guys have been fucking all over the place and met cool people and shit. Fuck yeah. Thanks, y'all. Danzig's my all-time favorite musician. He doesn't give a fuck who hates him. No, he does not. And I'd put Danzig right up there with Johnny Rotten in that sense. Marilyn Manson was on that card. Holy shit. Dude, I'm sorry. Marilyn Manson's album, Antichrist Superstar, and fucking Disposable Teens. Dude, track 99, when you listen to it, is fucking out of this world um, on Antichrist Superstar. And that took art and talent and fucking time. Like, I will not take Antichrist Superstar away from fucking Manson. Like, yeah, when Lest We Forget came out, a lot of the hardcore fans bailed because sellouts, dude, greatest hits album, sorry. Lest We Forget needed to have Antichrist Superstar on that. It's the only thing he slipped up on. I love the interrupters going to see them in December. I'm sure you fucking are, Captain. Um, This was pre-anarchist. He was pushing the black hat. Fuck yeah. Manson is a Ross Williams ripoff. We talked about that, man. I think that he got his inspiration. I did check out Ross Williams. I think that Manson got inspiration from it. I mean, that's like saying ICP ripped off Kiss. It's two very different things, but they were inspired to do the face paint thing. Probably because of Kiss. And it sells a lot of merchandise. There's, that's that, you know? That's my stance on it. When, when you, there's a difference between ripping somebody off and then fucking being influenced by them. Uh, back in the day, we used to call it bit off. When it came to hip-hop, oh, he bit off this horrorcore artist who did this horrorcore thing, who did this horrorcore thing, who already did this horrorcore thing based off of what fucking Brother Lynch Hung did. You know, it was a comment. Dude, I swear Manson had his guitarist cock in his mouth. Dude, I would not be surprised. Manson did a lot of crazy shit, but that's not the case from what I'm told. I know he kicked his guitarist. Um, Kiss was the first merch gods. Yes, they were. Uh, Jonathan Davis, uh, gathering the juggalo uh, rest in the parking lot at that show. Damn, Daniel. That's the shit. Oh, shit, guys. Damn, this was just supposed to be about the Hollow Wicked fucking trail yet. Here we are, an hour and 27, I'm sorry, an hour and 28 minutes later. Jesus, you guys fucking came out of the woodwork. I was like, I was expecting like two viewers and then like people show up. Damn, I missed the fucking notification. This is cool shit. I wasn't expecting kind of checks time, but whatever. Love Mance, but the thing is with shocking guitars is that they go from shocking to just not shocking years later. Um, I, I'm guessing that one dislike was Snaps. That's my guess. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like, where do you go after you're done? Like, can Marilyn Manson do anything more shocking than, for instance, what Gordy has done? I mean, Gordy's still shocking the fuck out of me. His lyrics less vile. However, he's like, I'm going to spin it this way and do it this way to the point where it makes sense and not selling out. Big difference. What is shocking one decades is not shocking another. Right. Um, I, I constantly talk about this, but there was that whole thing with Body Count when they did that song Cop Killer and it, the fucking Republicans like fucking shamed it. And then years later, people were constantly doing it. So it just became a whatever. Dude, if we smoked a bowl with corn, my boss was slamming ink on Fieldy and Jonathan. I so miss those days. Dude, I fucking miss those days for you. Damn. But, I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it is now. You know what I mean? It's like a lot of crazed fans are like a part of like why bands don't really hang out with their fans anymore. Like, Chillin' with Gordy and Bizarre was like a huge reminder of like how important the underground is. So, on a mass, what is underground music? It's when the guys aren't afraid to fucking hang out with their fans that's that's what it is for me you know i told my girl i said i'm gonna go to the front fucking barricade to go and sing all the songs that i know from lars 
And the ones that I don't, I'm going to fuck them up. It's going to be a great fucking time. But I owe it to fucking Lars. I mean, I owe it to them for fucking, for MNE for fucking putting them up too. Mainstream stuff, lots of groups at the beginning. Bowie, Cooper, Gigi, Roz, Williams, and on and on. If you want to call it that, I still feel like he did his own shit. I mean, I'm sorry, Disposable Teens, Antichrist Superstar, fucking some of the songs that are on there, like, those are original as fuck. I saw Jello the Offer last night. I'm sure you fucking did with the Dead Kennedys. Aw, fuck you. It was one of my first punk shows my cuz took me to. Lucky bastard. I wanted to see the Dead Kennedys. I'd propose to my girl at a Dead Kennedy show. She'd kill me. But yeah, dude, fucking, I love the Dead Kennedys a lot. Um, Holiday in Cambodia, fucking, um, I, I still gotta say California Uber Alice is my favorite song from them. It was awesome looking back. Oh, dude, I can imagine. Like, and that's the thing, man, like, times have changed. People have changed, like, social media's changed a lot of people, and it's changed the way that, like, we're able to interact with people and shit. But, like, like I said, you guys saw my vest. Like, fucking Bizarre signed the inside of it. Fucking Gordy signed the other side of my shoulder, which was blank, which I thought was dope. Spooky kids were original for the fir- for the time. Manson had a clear vision of what he would become. And I think that's why I'm, I'm really shocked that Manson's still doing music. Um, I figured he'd be done. But, like everyone else, they fucking start a beef with somebody. They fucking get their name back out there, and that's what happens. Like, and then they're going to drop a fucking album and then people are gonna go home and buy it and listen to it that's how it works don't get me wrong i liked how he did it i liked him when people were like marilyn manson who is she <laughs> uh yeah yeah that's i i remember those days i remember when i was one of the people that asked who Mar- who marilyn manson was and what kind of music she played so you get to see the lit vid before everyone else no um I'm just going to probably get the notification that it dropped. Like, they didn't... They got our names down on a, on, a, on a waiver, basically. Unrelated, but I hope Rob Zombie keeps making movies. We love his films. I hope so, too. But he needs to stop making music and focus on one or the other. I've been saying that for the longest time, and I'll say it again. He needs to do one or the other. Like, your plate's full, dude. You're getting old. <laughs> Fucking pick one. Ah, shit. Phone's dying, guys. And I think it's about time to end this here soon. Uh, dude, we're spo- we were gonna go see Anti Flag uh, playing with Real Big Fish, but then I found out the Murphys were playing with fucking the Interrupters, and I couldn't resist. Like I had to go see the Murphys for a second time in six months. Like those are my guys. They're fucking New England. It's fucking Al Bar. Their album had just come out that I had listened to on YouTube over and over again and memorized their lyrics in like three days. Look at any band that came through. They're real folk, including Danzig. The attitude he had, it's earned, and it's not his fans. It's other bands that angered him. Yeah, I get that, too. Uh, True Lords of Salem is my favorite. Um, I think to this day, um, I gotta be that guy. I gotta be that guy and say, it's definitely for me, House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, and Ashley likes Devil's Rejects. Um, I gotta say, I'm sorry, Captain Spaulding in the first movie was funnier. I feel like I feel like he was more like Captain Spaulding, and like stayed in character. And I felt like Devil's Rejects was again a sequel, yet also a standalone. So there's that. Um, fucking yeah, I I I love it. I love House of a Thousand Corpses. I remember fucking buying House of a Thousand Corpses. It cost me like twenty five thirty dollars at the music shop, same music shop that I bought the Headbangers Ball CD from. Believe that. It's eleven thirteen. We went over time. Uh, it's been good talking with you all for fucking <clears throat> an hour and a half. That was honestly unexpected. I was just gonna talk about the Hollow Wicked video. I just wanted to be the first to talk about it. Um, isn't Devil's Rejects a prequel? No, 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 no. Devil's Rejects came after House of a Thousand. Uh, still talk with one of Glenn Danzig's best friends. He runs a horror magazine. Goes to all the Misfits reunions. Sent me the first show. Doyle uh, case back. Uh, case back with him. Nice. House of a Thousand is awesome. I agree. Go watch 31 if you haven't yet. Yeah, fucking, uh, we streamed 31, and we didn't like it, and then we saw it on DVD, we liked it a lot more. Uh, so quality is important, as this channel has discovered that quality is very important. Sorry, fat fingers. 
my two best. No, you're good, dude. I kind of got the gist. But like I said, Chuck's going live in 15 minutes. I want us all to be able to recuperate, uh, grab some drinks, grab some dinner, grab some food. It was made after a thousand course, but I thought the story comes before. No, 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 no. The, they actually referenced it in the beginning. They talked about it. I haven't watched 31 yet. Dude, go do it. Um, living next door to Missouri and been to uh, Salas several times. It was actually believable to me. I just got excited talking from home scene. Dude, I got excited about it too. I'll see you all. Peace to you all. Good show, Sid Jones. Thanks, boss. Uh, James Coffin, watch it. Yes, watch 31. Yes, watch 31. It's actually... It's insane, especially when you like see like who, what role people are playing in it. Like Rob Zombie's films allows actors to be wide ranged. So, yeah, peace everybody. Have a good night. I will see you guys in the Chuck Reeves chat. I hope. Um, fucking see you over at Chuck. Absolutely. And thank you guys for fucking tuning in and fucking showing up for this. Like that means the fucking world to me. You guys doing that again? I was just supposed to be the first to talk about the fucking Hollow Wicked trailer. Great stream, Sid. Peace out. I'll see you soon, Captain. I hope, and uh, I'll see you guys over the Chuck, uh, Chuck stream. And with that being said, my name is Jones, and from the bottom of my heart, and from the bottom of my right testicle, fuck what you think.